my cat is called Minka. And she is my antidote to the desolation that has gripped Zimbabwe this last decade or so. I felt I was getting depressed as the situation worsened. My friends left the country. I joined a gym, but then I didn't have the money to train. I joined a church, and the pastor died. <laughs> I began to talk to my cat more than to other people. I began to take her behavior seriously. Yes, my cat is a she. And I challenge you too. Just observe a cat seriously. A cat will slink round. When it wants something, it meows. At least it meows if it is well trained. If it is not well trained, it simply takes what it wants. But even then, whether it is properly domesticated or not, a cat never takes everything. No matter how much is there, no matter how much is available to be taken, a cat only takes enough. So this is answer number one from my cat. No matter how much there is, only take enough for your needs. Oh yes, I hear you all say, we all know that. And I agree, we do all know that. But do we do it? We on this continent have been calling each other greedy for decades. Our greedy leaders, we say. Our greedy managers and executives. Our greedy small businessmen. Our greedy corporate sector. Our greedy mothers. Our greedy women. Our greedy brothers. Our greedy fathers. We go on and on. We've even done more than go on and on. We have shot each other because one says the other is greedy and takes away what she should have. We have burnt down property and people. We have mutilated each other, but we have not stopped being greedy. That makes you think, doesn't it? Usually, when so much effort is invested in stopping an unwanted phenomenon, some degree of positive result occurs, but not with us, not with the people on this continent. So I ask the question, have we really identified the problem? Is it really greed we are talking about? Lambuzo, the fa Marechera, the famous Zimbabwean writer, once said, it's impossible to eat enough if you do not know where your next meal is coming from. What I am saying is that the characteristic we call greed is a much more serious condition than what we have taken it for. I am saying that we on this continent have called greed for so long is a much graver existential crisis than just greed. This crisis is so grave that if we do not take care now, it could be terminal for the next era in terms of our global viability. And I believe this next era truly is within our grasp if we do take care. Some call this excessive behavior that is so marked in us continentals, consumerism. This comes as no surprise. The market, 
which we now take as a natural phenomenon, would call it that. Academia has another name and calls this behavior materialism, for example. I do not call this behavior by any of these three names. I developed another concept by considering more deeply the matter of my satisfied cat. To be satisfied and to behave in a satisfied manner means my cat knows when she has had enough. In addition, I note two important aspects to the ability to identify satisfaction. First of all, the cat knows what it requires. Secondly, the cat knows when that requirement has been met. The cat is able to detect, perceive, and process the meeting of its requirements. Can we? Do we know what we require? And do we know when these requirements have been met? I think we do not. Therefore, I want to share with you today the notion that what has been called <coughs> greed or consumerism or materialism is not any of these. It is a serious existential neurosis. We continentals do not know what we require. Therefore, we cannot know when we have that which we require. We think we need a cell phone to communicate, but even though we are communicating perfectly well with one cell phone, we feel we need half a dozen of them. So it is with cars, women, blonde women, houses and rooms in them, power, you name it. We cannot have enough because we do not know what enough is. Our situation is like the situation of those distressed women who suffer from bulimia, trying to attain unattainable physical proportions that for some reason they believe they must have. As Lambuzo Marechera indicated, insatiability is the manifestation of a negation. In my mind, the proposition that our collective insatiable continental desire is a negation is attested to by the observation that mostly our desire has been for what is out there. Our desire has not been for what is in here. Our insatiable desire has been for those hammers, that technology, another haute couture, a different story. Our desire has been for what I call the not I. We have seen ourselves not as producers, but as negations into which the productions of others can be emptied. Where we have at least reproduced, we have fallen upon that reproduction of ourselves and we have torn it to pieces. The good news is that slowly this is changing. The essential in us as continentals is stirring. This essential is redefining us in accordance with our time. And out of this definition comes our own affirming production. We see tangible manifestations of this affirmation in countries like Kenya, India, and Nigeria, amongst others. These countries are beginning not only to speak, but also to produce their own truth. I am sure our own Zimbabwean affirmation is beginning, but it is essential to understand the nature of our situation in order to redefine it, in order to go from a collective consciousness of not I 
to a collective consciousness of we-centered production that is globally competitive in the 21st century. I am not saying it is easy, but I know it is possible. Now, what, you may ask, does my cat have to do with cockroaches? Apart from the fact that, unfortunately, with respect to the insects, they both live in my kitchen. <laughs> well, after I'd been humbled by having answers to my fundamental existential questions answered by my cat, I happened to watch television one night with my family. One of the films we laughed our heads off over was Men in Black 1, featuring Will Smith and a giant extraterrestrial cockroach. The alien arthropod comes down to Earth to steal the galaxy, which clearly was going to end badly for everybody. The Will Smith character was completely beaten. He simply watches as the insect clambers up into its spaceship. Then the Will Smith character sees a swarm of terrestrial cockroaches on the ground and crushes some of them into the dirt under his foot. The alien insect howls and flings itself down to save its terrestrial brethren. The Will Smith character is able to retrieve the galaxy. Thus, through this act of affirming recognition and love by the alien cockroach, order and balance was restored to the universe. It was bad enough being taught by my cat how low on the evolutionary scale I was in some respects. I ended up asking, my goodness, am I now even lower than an extraterrestrial cockroach? <laughs> Thank you.